One thing that you might not know about me is that I really love playing board games. Designing a board game from scratch has been on my bucket list for a really long time. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. In this video, let's see if I can design a tile-based board game where the tiles electronically interact with each other when they snap together just like these magnet tiles. Here's the overall plan. What I'm envisioning are a whole bunch of identical tiles, and each tile has some LEDs or something on there that are interactive. And as each player goes, they'll place their tile down onto the board, and depending on how and where they place their tile, the LEDs will respond accordingly. Now the question is, how are these tiles gonna communicate to each other? I can put magnets on the tiles and they'll snap together, but there's no communication path between the two tiles. So there are a few options. The first thing that comes to mind is using RFID or NFC, but that seems a little bit complicated for this project. The next idea that I had was to use infrared LEDs to send information back and forth, kind of like your old TV remote. But I think that that's gonna be prone to light pollution and it's not gonna be very reliable. So I did some digging and I found some magnetic connectors on the DigiKey website. These are the same type of connectors that used to be found on the old MacBooks. I think using these magnetic connectors is what's going to make this whole project successful. Not only do these connectors have magnets that snap together, they also provide a path for communication. So now I've got to decide what shape these tiles are going to be. So there's several options here. We could go with square tiles. We could use triangle tiles. Instead of wasting a whole bunch of time, let's just prototype some different shapes to see what works best. I went ahead and I laser cut out several different shapes because I want to test out all the different shapes to see which one I like best, see which one's going to work best for this game. The first one I'm going to test are the square tiles. If you look closely, I cut out five little holes and I can press the connectors into each of these. Now I'm not really confident that these will stay in, so I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue just for testing purposes. So just in case I haven't made this clear yet, these are gonna be made out of circuit boards. So instead of being made out of wood, imagine this as a circuit board. All of these tiles will click together. They'll have electronics on them. They'll have lights. And as you connect them together, they'll interact. Honestly, this is getting me really excited about this project. My initial thoughts are that these work really well. I think that this is gonna work just fine. I've got the square ones here. They snap together in a really satisfying way. And honestly, I think any of these shapes will work with the exception of the triangle. And that's because each of these connectors actually comes as a mating pair. So there are connectors that have spring-loaded pogo pins sticking out and the mating connector is a flat pad. And you can't have the same type of connector connect together. So for a triangle shape, that's not gonna work. So this is kind of a, a non-starter, but I really like the square and I really like the way that these hexagons are coming together. I think I've settled on using the hexagons because as I build this out, I think it just looks cool. It's like a honeycomb pattern. And as we all know, hexagons are the best of gons. So I think moving forward, I'm gonna stick with the hexagons and now we can start designing a circuit board. I've decided on a shape and I've decided how these are gonna to connect together. Now I just need to figure out what these are going to do. These aren't gonna be made out of wood, they're gonna be an actual circuit board, so I need to figure out what is gonna go on the circuit boards. This game is gonna be played in turns and as each player places their tile on the board, a pathway of light will illuminate. With that information, now we have some technical decisions on how this is actually gonna work. So our initial thought is that we're gonna have a central starting tile, and that's gonna have a microcontroller on it. And as people place their tiles on the board, their pathways will illuminate. But as we got into that idea, we thought that a central microcontroller having to communicate with so many different tiles is gonna get messy. That means it has to keep track of where they are and how many there have been added, and I think it's gonna be a little bit too complicated. So then we considered the idea of adding a microcontroller on each individual tile. 
Now the advantage of that is that we can just read inputs of the neighboring tiles and the firmware will decide what needs to happen and which lights need to illuminate. In other words, there's not one central brain controlling the entire board. The logic is decentralized and each tile will act individually. Now that I'm thinking about it, it's kind of ironic that this is going to look like a beehive, but these don't behave like a beehive at all. There's no centralized queen bee. So let me walk you through the schematic. Here in the upper left-hand corner, we chose the ATtiny3217 as the microcontroller. We had to find the right balance of GPIO pins as well as program memory. In the upper right-hand corner here, we have all the magnetic connectors. And then down here, we've got three different chains of addressable LEDs. So these are the RGB LEDs that will illuminate. And the reason we have three chains is because there are gonna be three paths on each tile. If you think about a hexagon, it has six sides and each path needs to have a start point and an end point that is unique. So there's only gonna be three paths on here. So we look at the schematic, we have three different paths of LEDs and each one has a GPIO pin that is controlling it. So let's move on to the board layout. So in the middle here, I've put the microcontroller and I kind of fanned out all of those different signals to start out with because trying to connect so many signals at the end is going to be a disaster. So that was the first thing I did when I did the layout so that I could easily access all those GPIO pins. The next thing I did was to place all of the connectors around the edge of the board. I had to look at the data sheet to get the spacing just right so that those magnetic connectors will snap together without any interference. So that's really important that I get that spacing just right. The next thing I did was I created the paths of LEDs. There are gonna be several different patterns of tiles in this game. They're not gonna all be identical. So for our first pattern, we've got one pathway that leads from the bottom to the top a second pathway on the left side here that makes an arc, and then the mirror image on the right hand side. Remember earlier when I said that each connector has a mating pair? If you look at my board layout here, you'll notice that connectors one, three, and five are the pin type, and two, four, and six are the pad type. So as you put those together, there's only so many orientations that they'll go in. What's interesting about this is that there are technical constraints that are kind of making the design of this a little more challenging and I think it's going to make the gameplay even more interesting. I think we have the basic concept nailed down and it's time to order all these parts and the boards from DigiKey. Once those arrive, we can start assembling these. It's been a few days and the PCBs have come in and I'm really excited because they look awesome. It doesn't matter how many times I've ordered PCBs, I always get excited when they come in. So let's dive in and see what we're dealing with. The first thing I'm noticing, of course, is some of the mistakes I made. And I'm not sure I would even call them mistakes, but maybe just something I would change in the next version. The silk screen on these paths don't go to the edge of the board. And there's no reason that the silk screen can't go to the edge of the board. It just makes the path a little clearer. So that's a minor change that I will make uh, once I do revision two. The bigger issue is the footprint for these connectors. When I put a connector in here, I can feel a little bit of wiggle room. For most designs, that's not a big issue if the connector is a little bit wonky. But for what I'm doing, I really need these PCBs to fit really tightly together in a precise way. And if I solder these connectors in just a little bit off, it might introduce some gaps at the edge of the PCB. So in the future, what I can do is just change the footprint in there to have a lot less play so that when I put the connectors in there, they don't wiggle around. But other than those two minor things, these boards look great and I'm ready to start installing all the components that I ordered from DigiKey. Oh, don't blow away. Before I get too far into this, I wanna test to see if this is gonna work. I've got the microcontroller on there as well as some capacitors and two LEDs. So that should be enough to program the microcontroller and light up those two LEDs. So I'm gonna jump on the computer and connect up the UPDI programmer. That's kind of a new interface for me. I've never programmed a microcontroller that uses this interface. I found the board support package and the example library for this uh, microcontroller and I'm just gonna light up two of these NeoPixel LEDs. So I had to change the pin number and the number of pixels and now I'm gonna upload it and see if they turn on. Failed uploading, upload error, exit status one. Okay, 
Well, I thought I was gonna get lucky and that this would just work right off the bat, but it never happens to go that way. So I'm gonna do my homework and actually read the data sheet and jump into this a little bit so that I can understand why this is failing. I just finished reading through some of the documentation for this programmer and for the chip, and there were a couple of settings that I missed in the Arduino menu. I also made sure that all of the pins on the microcontroller had good solder joints. So I think this should work now when I hit upload. Check that out. Looks like it wrote all of that code and it succeeded. So if I turn the board over here, you can see this LED animation that I wrote is working. It just blinks one LED on each branch uh, a different color. So we've got red, green, blue. I'm glad that that wasn't a big issue. I can move forward and this gives me the confidence to start assembling more of these boards. So let me go assemble two more of these boards, put all the LEDs on, and then I'll come back here for a final demonstration of these boards working together. Here's where we find out if this is actually gonna work. I've rigged up a little magnetic connector here that's powered by a USB-C cable, and if I plug that here on the edge, I should see this light up. Now let's see what happens if I snap together this second tile. Look at that. So the path continues on, and finally, I wanna connect this third tile. If you look closely, the path continues back and ends on the starting tile. So I'm hoping to see this part of the path light up when this piece snaps into place. Perfect. As exciting as this is, it's not the end goal for this project. All I wanted to accomplish in this video was to create two or more tiles that snap together and react based on where they're placed. And I think I've demonstrated that here, and now I get to do the exciting and fun part of building this out and creating a game out of this. In the next video, I'm gonna flesh out this idea and design and create a full-blown board game with these tiles. I'm gonna have lots of different colors, lots of different tile patterns, and it's gonna be exciting. Make sure you keep an eye on the DigiKey YouTube channel so that you don't miss part two of this series.